I'm going to show you how you can use generative AI to go from a simple text prompt to an elaborate 3D model in seconds. So I'm going to go through the platform, which is meshy.ai, and then look at how you could create a simple model, build elaborate scenes, and more traditional digital animation techniques to bring your scene to life. Here we go. Okay, so as I mentioned, the tool I'm using is called Meshi, and there's a link in the video description below, and press Try Meshi for free to get started. Once logged in, you're presented with a very smart UI where you can browse other users' generations that they've shared. You can click on these, check out the text prompts they've used to generate them. You can also remix, copy the seed number, and expand on them from there. I'm gonna go over to the AI toolkit, choose text to 3D, making sure I'm using the new beta released version, which is the best version out so far. And to get started, I'm gonna go and add my initial text prompt. So I'm just going to add human skull, realistic. And you could then choose what art style you want to go for from auto where it will choose for you, realistic, cartoon, or low poly. And I'm gonna press realistic and you could just press generate, but I'm actually gonna add a few negative prompts to help try and get slightly better output. To get you started, you can press guidelines, scroll down to the bottom, and there's a negative prompt section. I'm just gonna copy these and paste those into the negative prompt box and press generate. And then within 20 seconds, it's generated four 3D meshes for us to review. And these are all low quality to start with. You can click on this one here, which looks pretty cool. And it's got some here in more funky colors. And you can press the refine tab here or press the settings and press refine. And I found this can take less than a minute to complete. And you see, we've got a really cool Pretty realistic 3D model, nice high polygon count, and the texturing isn't bad at all. It's got slightly confused. It looks like there's maybe some of the teeth texture on the head, but I'll show you how you can retexture the model later on. But overall, looking really nice. Yeah, very happy with that. In the texture settings, you can go from color to PBR, which will add normals, roughness, and level of reflectiveness or metallic. And you can increase or decrease these, and we now have a slightly metal skull. In the environment settings tab, you'll see there is a HDRI image up the strength of that map and you can rotate it. So you can quickly see how your model might react in a final 3D package later on. There's also a new mesh settings toggle where you can change from triangles to quad and you can also reduce the complexity of your mesh. With that done, we can turn on the wireframe again and see we now have quads rather than triangles and far lower polygon count. Press download and there's various formats available. I'm actually gonna go for a GLB file and press download and that's gonna cost 20 credits. Okay, and before I do some more model generation to build up an entire scene, I wanted to show off the AI texturing feature within Meshi. Going to the AI toolkit, there's AI texturing, which is in beta, and clicking the button. Once inside the AI texturing tool, you can click new project, and then upload my 3D file, give it a name, and press create project. You then have the choice of using a text prompt to generate a new texture, or you can use concept art. So perhaps if you've created some imagery using another AI tool, or you've got some photos or illustrations, you could upload these here and generate a new texture and it will bear those in mind. I'm gonna stick with the text prompt approach. And for object, I'm gonna say gold skull covered in hieroglyphics. And you can choose the style here. And I'm using ancient style HDR high detail realism. Negative prompts, again, I'm just gonna paste in those from the guidelines and we can select from their various art styles. For this first one, I'm just gonna leave it on realistic and we're gonna say use the original UVs and press generate. Okay, and here is the completed retextured model and it's looking really impressive, covered in these gold hieroglyphics and there's loads of lovely details. There are some areas where the textures got slightly confused, slightly distorted, but you have to remember this is just the beta version of the tool and like all these AI tools, they're all steadily getting better and better all the time. And I think this retextured cartoon line art style skull is really epic. So much cool detail, love it. Now I'm going to generate a few more 3D models using their text to 3D tool. I'm just gonna write cute chipmunk, leave those negative text prompts, change to the cartoon styles and press generate. And you'll see I've got my four different generations of a cute chipmunk and there's a few differences in the mesh and the tail choose the one that you think's most relevant for what you're looking to create and press refine. And here I have that refined mesh, pretty decent model, but there are some things going wrong with the texture applied to the character. And you will find this with AI 3D model generation solutions as it struggles with complex characters. So the way to break this up would be to generate a separate model for the head, the body, the arms, the tail, and piece it together in Blender or another 3D package, but still very, very impressive. And this took just a couple of clicks. And a quick preview of some other generations. I had this little spaceship with neon pink blasters generated, and this is the refined version. 
and I produced another set of spaceships, this time using the low poly art style. And this was the final refined version with this very cool low poly sci-fi look, which you can imagine how this in a world with loads of other low poly assets could look really cool and give a unique style to your animation. I then created this evil bobblehead figure. If you zoom out, that's gonna look really awesome. I had it generate some asteroids. And again, you could very quickly iterate on this, creating different assets to place into your scene and then update the textures. And I generated these different human heads, this guy with a big bushy beard. And this is the refined version. So loads of really nice details in that texture. There's a few areas that could be improved again, like there's a little bit of an eye in the center of his face, but you know, maybe he's got three eyes. But it does just show how far this AI technology is coming in the 3D space. I also generated this cowboy, slightly more cartoon cowboy, this intense male adventurer with some scars on his face. I generated a few different exploding planets. This Zelda inspired big ass sword using the text prompt, big ass sword. A tree and the texture of the bark is really impressive whilst the model kind of loses some of the clarity around the leaves. So maybe a more cartoon style would suit the current generations better. This fantastic unicorn wizard and it looks like some sort of evil My Little Pony character for some future CGI series. A scorpion lizard cat, because why not? And a lobster dog and it's done a great job of combining some characteristics of a dog with a lobster. And a cute little cat looks really impressive with eyes on the back of his head. This is one of my favourites, it's a cute fox character with green eyes. A low poly princess ninja. And finally, this futuristic bear warrior in heavy armor. And I think this is one of my favorites. So in a moment, I'm gonna show how you can take one of these characters and try to easily rig it and bring it to life with some stock animation. So I'm gonna download the FBX file, plus quickly show how you can bring it into After Effects with its new 3D format support and light it with a HDR image generated using AI. And before I move on to that section of the video, I wanted to quickly touch on the pricing for Meshi. Um, it's available for free where you get 200 credits per month and you can have one task in the queue and any assets are shared publicly with a Creative Commons license. You can get pro access from $16 a month if you pay for a full year, otherwise it's $20. And this gives you 1000 credits each month. And you can have 10 things generating at the same time and you will actually own the assets, the designs that you generate. They then have their max tier where you can have 4,000 credits and 20 things generating at the same time. Then as a paid subscriber, you have the option to pay for additional credits. Okay, I'm back to our bear character and I've downloaded a GLB file that I can take into After Effects later on and I've downloaded an FBX file which I'm gonna take over to Mixamo to add a character rig and bring him to life. So if you head to mixamo.com and with an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, you can log in to your account and browse characters that exist already. And you can also upload characters and use various bits of pre-made motion capture. I'm gonna go ahead and press upload character and select our bare FBX file. And I can flip the view round so he's facing forwards, press next, and then position these markers for his chin, wrists, elbows, knees, and groin, and press next. And then it goes through an auto rigging process and it's completed and he looks like he's pretty well rigged and it gives you a little default motion. You can press next, check out our character. You can click animations up here and browse different motions. And it looks like he's working really nicely. He's got some sweet moves. And you can tick in place if you need to. And then once you're happy with your animation, you can press download and download an FBX file with that animation applied, and then you can take it into your preferred 3D package, whether that's Blender, Cinema 4D, Maya, or a game engine like Unity or Unreal, and start piecing together a scene, which I'm not going to go through in this actual video, as I've covered it in previous ones, plus the fact you're watching a video about 3D model generation means you might be familiar with one of those packages already. You could also choose the T pose to have a static pose of your character, and it will download with that character rig that you can then animate in your own 3D package or apply some AI animation that you might have generated with a tool like Motion or Motion with two O's. And I've previously covered that process in these two videos on the channel. And as one last thing, I'm gonna take one of our skull models, drop that into After Effects with a background that I'm gonna quickly generate and show how you can light it with some HDR lighting. Now I've shown this process in different ways over recent videos, but again, I'm gonna jump into Zoe Depth on Hugging Face and this is a version made by Sharik Farouk. You head over to here, press image to 3D and choose a background image. And I've got this one that I generated using Mid Journey. 
and then tick Keep Occlusion Edges and press Submit. And within a couple of seconds, we have this 3D mesh with the depth applied to the scene. I can then download a GLB 3D file. I'm then going to head to Blockade Labs where you can create AI generated 360 images, 3D worlds, and HDR images. And I'm on the paid tier which allows you to download HDR images. And I'm going to add the text Empty Room in Dungeon, Dust Clouds, Light Shafts, Greeny Blue Tones, and choose the style Realism and press Generate. And it's generated this really cool image. And whilst it's not exactly the same as our Mid Journey image, there's enough similar lighting that we can use it for our project today. So I'm going to press Download and choose HDR. I've then opened Adobe After Effects, which is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, and I'm creating a 4K comp at 30 frames per second. And I've already imported one of those skull models, that Zoe Depth scene, and that HDR image from Blockade Labs. I'm going to drag down our Zoe Depth scene first of all, drop that in, press OK. Press R to bring up the rotation properties, flip it 180 degrees on the Y axis, right click, select New, and press Camera. And I'm going to choose a 35mm camera. And we can move the camera around in this scene. And as long as you stay within certain limitations of the movement, it looks pretty awesome already. Then I'm going to add our skull model. Press OK. Change the views to four views so we can see what we're doing. And our skull is positioned over here. I'm just going to drag that over above our 3D mesh. You can see it going through the mesh here. Press S to bring up the scale properties and reduce the size of our skull. Jump back to one view where we're on the active camera, press R, and rotate that Y axis. Whilst we're here, we can press the stopwatch, set a keyframe at the beginning of the timeline. I'm going to move to the end and rotate our skull. I'm then going to grab our HDR lighting image, drag that down, and then right click and press New, Light, and create an environment light. Press OK. And in the environment settings, making sure you've got it available with this button here. I'm going to change from default to that HDR and that instantly affects the lighting being applied to our skull and our 3D scene. And we can go through and play around with the intensity, the amount of shadow, darkness, and it helps tie both those 3D models together within our scene. You can then temporarily turn off that environment light as it helps speed up your preview window and go through and set some keyframes for the camera. Plus potentially bring in some stock dust clouds from somewhere like Envato Elements that we can drop into the scene, applying a blending mode like multiply or screen so they fit within the environment and adjust the settings, adding some color grading until we're really happy with the final result. I'm gonna quickly go through and add a few more touches to the scene and then render it out. But essentially, this is the process for generating a 3D model using Meshi and bringing it into Adobe After Effects. I could, of course, spend many hours refining the scene, making it look just right, but for this tutorial, it'll do. I hope you've enjoyed this video looking at 3D model generation using Meshi, and as always, please press like, subscribe, and leave any comments. Cheers.